Hello, welcome back to Mario is Missing, a fanfiction by Skywrites, on Archive of Our Own. The cover was, of course, made by Freight Symphony, who you can find on Tumblr. Uh, link in the description. Now, I know what you're thinking. Um, why do you not sound like complete garbage? Well, you see, the reason for that, of course, is, uh, I switched recording software. Uh, yeah, uh, voice recorder? Uh, not the best thing to record your voice on. As you can probably tell. As you could, as you've probably seen before. Uh, yeah. The audio's not too good. Right now, I'm using Audacity. Which I found is... Way better. Hmm. So, yeah. Uh, on the bright side... There's no downside, what am I talking about? Uh... Good news, your ears will not be tortured as much anymore. So, uh, yay for that. I watched the first video, um, just now. I talked for 12 minutes at the beginning, just with for no reason. Oh my god, oh my god, am I, am I gonna be rambling again? No, no, this isn't gonna happen, it's not gonna repeat. Let's just keep going. Uh, yeah, well, uh, video's worse than I, um, I don't know if it's worse than I remember. Whatever. Uh, this is a problem. I do hope, although I don't want to go back and change it, I think it's good to keep my first impression up there. So I just guess I'll, uh, I suppose I'll just hope that it doesn't turn uh, people away. Yeah. Because I do think I'm improving. Uh, and speaking of improvements... Uh, you may have noticed that in the second half of episode three, uh, there were, like, no interruptions anymore. Like, where I, you know, cut off the video to react to something. Um, that's because I changed the way I edit. No, I, 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 I stopped editing in the middle of that video and then uh, came back, like, much later and completely st and edited, uh, started editing a lot more mistakes out. So, yeah. I just wonder if that's uh, if that's good or bad, or if like people don't care. Uh, I mean, I guess you can comment which 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 way you prefer. Um, I mean, I, I probably won't change it because, uh, well, I'm recording these in advance. I'm I'm making these in advance, and uh, also, uh, I'm kind of just doing whatever the whatever in the world I want. So. Uh, hmm. Although I'm, I guess I'm still curious to find out or whatever. Uh, okay, en enough about that. Um, Chef Torre is a character from uh, Super Mario uh, RPG, which, as I mentioned before, I, I haven't played that game, but I found out that, no, Torre is actually a game character, which I thought so. His his traits seemed a bit too specific to be just some to be just an OC. So that's neat. Yes, as an assistant, which doesn't appear in this story for some reason. I mean, I guess it's not necessary. Yeah. Okay, right before uh, we get into this, uh, the uh, person actually mentions uh, Skywrites. The author actually ha mentions that they have some uh, musical inspiration for this chapter. Like, they linked three different songs uh, that inspired them, some of which are from uh, Mar Mario, Super Mario 3D World, and the last one is the... Th is uh, from Thousand Year Door. Uh, all three links are broken, but I do have, I think, one of the songs that uh, I, th I do think I prepared one of the songs of this that are linked here in, in preparation for this uh, story. So you're probably going to be hearing that. And uh, I mean, the Thousand Year Door Bowser battle. I mean, that's that's an easy uh, YouTube search. Not sure what the second one was though. Eh, well, whatever. I'll just fill in whatever I feel like. And uh, with that out of the way, has it been five minutes? It's been five. It's been four and a half minutes. All right. Uh, enough of this. Uh, let's get right into it, shall we? <clears throat> oh, I do hope I put a skip or something, or just something to indicate when the story actually starts. <clears throat> Mario is missing by Skywright, Chapter Four. You're on your own. <clears throat> Good old glass of water. I wonder how that sounds on the recording. <clears throat> I 
Ah, starting with a bit of irony. Uh, irony, I see. <clears throat> I can't do this. What was I thinking? There's no way I can do this. Huh? Did you say something? Gumbella asked, her mouth over the handlebars. Her scooter's motor puttered noisily, ready to leave me all alone. You mumble yourself way too much, Luigi. I can barely tell when you're actually talking. She paused and spit the handlebars out of her mouth, her eyes softening. You gonna be okay? No! Not at all! Uh, okay. I replied shakily. Hot air billowed throughout this part of the city. It rained still, but this fiery heat could not be sated. A dark, steamy mist rose across the streets. I could hear the distant booming of bass and dance music. Flyers were scattered about, littering every wall, every sidewalk, and haphazardly pasted to dirty old street lamps. Bowser's Castle, it read, in big, bold, red and green letters, followed by a smartly dressed monster tipping his ten-gallon hat in a mock gentleman's gesture. That monster was Bowser, king of the Koopas and king of crime. He invited anyone and everyone to gamble their troubles away at his casino club. Hey, and if gambling wasn't your thing, he had drink too. The best syrup in all of New Dunk. Totally legal! Maybe. This is as close as I can take you, Gumbella said, her spunky energy draining by the second out here. Koopas kept the streets busy here, their eyes falling upon her, and most importantly, her badge. Some pretended like they weren't staring, some pretended they were just minding their own business, but others just didn't care. Those others flat out gave her the stink eye, and boy did it stink. Like month-old mushrooms left out in rotten spaghetti sauce. I know it's scary, she said, all too aware of all the eyes on her right now. But they won't hurt you. They see me talking to you. They know that I know you, and that you were here last. Does that make sense? Well, it made a little sense. I saw no reason why they wouldn't hurt me, though. Maybe they wouldn't kill me, but what's to stop them from roughing me up? Goombelli didn't catch my mumbling muses. Don't forget, this isn't just for Daisy's crown. Maybe you can find out what happened to Mario, too. Like always, she was right. I was terrified. My legs were made of jelly, my brain felt like it was frozen in a snowstorm, yet my body was melting in a steaming oven. But I needed to find Mario. I needed to. Maybe not even for Mario's sake. For my sake. What was I supposed to do without him? A Mario brother without Mario? It wouldn't make sense. All right, the Coopers are getting antsy. I think it's time I scooted out of here, Gumbilla said, eyeing the streets nervously. Not that she would ever admit it. Call us if you need help, okay? Take care, Luigi. Bye-bye. I mumbled as her scooter purred away, her form turning into nothing but a tiny pink and yellow dot in the distant traffic. Soon, Gumbilla was mixed in with the rest of the city's neon lights, just like any other. Gone. And I was alone. For who knows how long, I just stood there, like an idiot. Koopas, Goombas, bandits, squeaks, and Dugans strolled by, splashing water on me with their heavy stomps. Why did they feel the need to stomp like army soldiers? Rude. No, this wasn't going to work. I felt all their eyes staring at me. Everyone was looking at me. I stuck out like a sore thumb. I had to go back home. Go back home and forget about this. Mario would find his own way back. The police don't need some idiot like me. I just get in the way. I was finally able to convince my legs to move by telling my body, it's okay, we're walking home, nothing to be afraid of. But of course, my clumsy body couldn't make it easy. I stumbled forward into something soft and velvety. The thing beneath me let out a sniffle of annoyance. Hey, watch where you're going, buddy, the shy guy threatened, using his tiny arms to push me backwards. For such a small thing, he really had a lot of strength. S -s -s Sorry, I mumbled, cursing my awkwardness as I stumbled backwards trying my best not to make any more of a scene, but of course that wasn't going to happen. My stupid feet landed on something sleek and smooth, a slippery wet chain. To my relief, that chain was attached to a woman's hand. She wasn't even a Koopa or anything. She was just a nice old rabbit lady. Uh-oh. In fact, someone who surely wouldn't get angry at a lowly man like me. How dare you! She screamed at the top of her lungs, the pearls around her neck reflecting a steaming red-hot rage. You stepped on my precious chain Jumpkins and leash! Do you have any idea how many coins this costs? I wanted to climb into a pipe, fall into an endless pit, and never come back out.
The chain that I stepped on held a pristine golden chain shop who was about as unhappy as its owner. Just how do you expect to pay for this? The chain shop hissed and growled in my direction, angry saliva dripping between its fangs. S sorry I cried. Knowing nothing else? Sorry isn't going to cover it, you little barbarian! She screamed, hailed in every passerby's gaze at me, even more so than I already were. An eye for an eye, as they say, if you can't pay! Her frown turned into a terrifying, toothy grin, eyes filled with a dark malice that I have never seen. Then it's only fair my chain shop begins takes a piece of you. What? She was going to let her chain shop eat me for stepping on its leash? She couldn't be serious. No one was going to just let this happen, right? But when I looked around desperately, hoping for any kind of help in this dark, forsaken city, I uh, only saw them avert their gazes. The chain shop growled and readied itself to lunge, its eyes firmly latched onto my face. Go! Go eat this little fool! She screamed, voice tinged with an unhinged laughter. Lucky for me, uh, my body uh, took the lead. I let out a sonic-pitched scream, the sound waves stunning the golden beast in its tracks. My legs shot out from underneath me and down the street, hurtling through crowds of Koopas, bandits, shy guys, and any kind of unsavory creature you could imagine. Oh, 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 oh. I remember you, boy! A voice howled behind me, echoing through the rainy streets. I didn't know where it was coming from. I only knew that I didn't want to hear it anymore. The only way to do that was to keep running. Just keep running. That's the one thing I was good at. Running away, screaming. I knocked over Dugans. Nearly stepped on some Goombas. Slammed into a few Hammer Bros. Ran through a dozen boos, but at least the voice and the barking were getting quieter. Mostly because the thumping music was getting louder. My brain could hardly process anything other than less of that sound equals good. Run towards less of that. The only problem with that plan of action was that it took me straight to Bowser's castle. The sound of my own screams lessened and was soon replaced by a catchy, jazzy beat couldn't resist but to tap my foot and hum along to it in my adrenaline pumped state. Trumpets and saxophones wailed, set in a chilling yet classy mood over the street corner. Before me loomed the infamous Bowser's Castle, terrifying and huge, its dark walls pierced the raining clouds above. Wind and lights swirled around it as if this building was generating the dark foreboding weather. Spotlights with Bowser's face danced along the black clouds, demanding to be seen by all. The words, Bowser's Castle, buzzed and blinked in bright green and red neon lights, an intimidating neon fire engulfing the words with orange and yellow. Near the entrance where the spotlight stood, I spied a live band playing their jazzy tunes, alluring potential customers. If you lived in this part of New Donk, you had nowhere to hide. Even if you closed your eyes to avoid his bright lights, his band's echoing tunes would be sure to reach your ears. A hammer bro sliced at his guitar, that dirty sound exploding throughout the, all the speakers, all while a band of Koopas played their saxophones. Piranha plants bobbed their heads to the beats, fangs glistening with drool, threatening to devour anyone that dared mess with the music. As if that wasn't enough, chain chomps jingled away, bouncing and bounding happily under the hypnotizing spell of Bowser's strange chomp. I didn't know much about Bowser, but I did know that he was a chain chomp activist. On TV, there would always be commercials showing a smartly dressed Bowser petting a bruised and dirty chain chomp, saying how it is our duty to spray and neuter our chain chomps. Rescue and adopt today, he'd say. Chain chomps just have a bad reputation. Like me, gahaha. There are no bad chain chomps, only bad owners. You hear me, punks? Take care of your pets, or I will come over there. And then the commercial usually got cut off. Not sure why they kept airing it like that. Should I have said that in Bowser's voice? I don't know. Maybe uh, save that for when he actually appears. <laughs> Even someone like me can understand why Bowser was so popular, despite the fact that he's a known criminal. But ask anyone about that in New Dunk City and you'd only get mixed responses. Some say he's nothing but a menace, the Toads. And others say that Bowser's the only one who cares about them. The Koopas, the Goombas, etc. As for me, what did I think about him? I don't know. I was terrified of him, but I was terrified of everyone. He gave Mario the most trouble out of everyone by far, but he never seemed quite as dangerous as everyone else either. Mario spoke harshly about Bowser, but I also heard a tinge of respect in his voice. I wish I could say I understood. Something broke through the blaring music. Shouting voices. The ritzy doors slammed open, red and gold gleaming dangerously yet elegantly. What do we tell you about feeding the charms, buster? A uh, tough piranha in a dark suit growled. His big hands easily tossed the poor drunk mole man onto the wet street. Use Molesville types thinks you can just waltz in here and do whatever you want. The boys don't like that. Ain't respectful. 
That old varmint looked mighty hungry, he just wanted to feed him a spell, the mole said, words slurred and head woozy. You don't feed chumps the syrup, wise guy. Ain't good for him, the Pianta bounces said. Did I mess up Pianta? I messed up Pianta. I messed up Piranha and Pianta again. I, 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 I... <sighs> you know what? Let's keep going. <clears throat> you don't feed chumps the syrup, wise guy. Ain't good for him, the Pianta Bouncer said, not understanding the irony of his syrup drunken mole before him. And the boss uh, would be angry knowing you uh, misgendered that chump. He's a girl, the Pianta sighed after that last bit. Just get out of here, you drunk. Don't show your face till you sober up or get more coin. That was the important part, wasn't it? The coin. The mole man was to run out of money. Pockets already lied from his syrup addiction. The mole let out a hiccup before scrambling away from the club, the piranha plants nipping at his miner's overalls. The crowd barely paid this any mind. It was full of everyone you could think of, from glamorously glitzy toads to even the thuggiest bandit. I never would have guessed toads would come here, but they were few and far between. It seemed Bowser didn't discriminate. Hmm. Except Yoshis. I didn't see a single Yoshi. Why was that? Maybe they didn't like Bowser's castle? Or maybe Bowser didn't like them? Ah well, that didn't matter. So, just how in the world was I meant to get in there? Would I have to talk to that scary bouncer? Maybe if I just told him I was here to see Bowser, and that I'm Mario's brother, they'd let me in? Or, wait, don't they hate Mario? No, no, no th this wouldn't work. No, absolutely not. None of this would work. This is too dangerous. I really should just go home like I wanted to from the start. Hey! hey yeah, no cutting! A raspy toad croaked. He rubbed his arms like he was freezing cold, his eyes staring at me, but looking through me. Wait, what? Did my stupid legs bring me to the front of the line? No! Buddy! What are you doing? What's with you, pal? The Pianta Bouncer said to me, sunglasses glaring beneath the neon lights. You some kind of tough guy? Me? No! Never! I, I mean, well, okay, how do I say this? Uh, I'm looking for my brother, Mario, and if I could just have a quick talk with Mr. Bowser, that would be really nice. No, no, that's stupid. What the hell are you jabbering on about? The Pianta growled, crossing his arms. You saying you're Mario's brother? Yeah, yeah, you and everyone else, bub. Now, uh, get in the back of the line before I make you. Ah, wait, no. I had come all this way. I couldn't just give up now. I tried to explain my situation more thoroughly, but also more quickly because everyone was getting quite angry with me. I tried to tell him about how a thug and Waluigi, who is my cousin apparently, but I don't know him well, got their crown stolen here, and I could prove Mario was my brother because, look, same hat. Uh, well, it's a similar hat. See, mine was green and his was red, and- You drugs are all the same! The Pianta yelled, grabbing me in his strong arms. Now I told you to scram! And with a power that could only be found in Piantas, he chucked me out over the line. My body soared through the air like a bumpty attempting to take flight by jumping off a cliff. As I flew over the band, they never stopped playing by the way, very professional, I realized that the Pianta must have been a chuckster. It made me sense why he was a bouncer here. I had to respect his form, he must have had years of practice. I landed in the wet asphalt nose first, far away from the entrance. The old Koopa woman swept litter away quickly. As I scrambled my gangly body back upright, I let out a defeated sigh. I knew I was in over my head. There was no way they'd let me in now. Excuse me, young man. The... Okay, hold on. Is this Kylie Koopa? Excuse me, young man. The old Koopa woman said, eyes hiding behind big round glasses. I couldn't help but overhear your little kerfuffle. Her big brimmed hat shielded her from the rain her purple robes magically dry. You said you were Mario's brother, didn't you? It's Cammy. Eh? Me? I looked around, making sure no one else was around. Why would anyone want to talk to me after all that? Her jaw went slack, and for a moment, the pleasant old woman seemed like merely an act. What? Of course I'm talking to you, you idiot! <coughs> Young man. A coughing fit overcame her, conveniently hiding whatever word she was trying to say before. Oh, well, hmm, yeah, that did make sense, didn't it? I uh, nodded long politely, trying my best to explain that I was Luigi, Mario's brother. Although, why did she want to know? 
<laughs> she cackled. Wait, cackled? Is that something old women did? Yeah, no, that was normal. And you want to meet Bowser, do you? Not sure where Mario is, you say? I nodded again, still unsure why this old lady was asking me all these questions. It's not like she could help me. But it was just nice to talk with someone who didn't want to eat me for once. Alas, all was hopeless. I waved goodbye to her and went on my way home. Wait, you fool! She screeched, freezing me in my tracks. I can get you to see Bowser. I'm sure his nastiness would love to meet you. It didn't seem like it was just fear keeping me in my place. I felt a weird force holding me down. Or was that just in my head? Either way, I wasn't going to turn down this sweet old lady. Okie dokie. I mumbled to her, noting the glowing red wand in her hand. Oh, very pretty. I liked her fashion sense. Right this way, she said, motioning to a blank wall, a casual smile on her wrinkled face. I blinked. It was just a brick wall. Was this just what happens when you get old? You start saying you know people and invite them to walk into walls? How very sad. Well, I already said I'd do it, and it'd be rude to say no now. With a shrug, I walked forward into the wall, preparing my body for impact. What happened next was a bit embarrassing. As I walked into the wall intentionally, it turned out there was not actually a wall at all. As soon as my body made contact with it, the wall poofed out of existence. With a few colorful triangles, circles, and squares floated away. Now you may say to yourself, Great, you didn't walk into a wall. But I was expecting to walk into a wall, not through a doorway. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I actually tumbled onto the floor, nose first, and landed squarely on the soft, regal carpeting. Boy, you must be keener than I gave you credit for, yelled Koopa said with a toothy grin, the kind of toothy grin that you can only have by not having many teeth. Not many can see through my magic. <laughs> ah, an illusionary door, of course. As an almost detective, I must have known that was there subconsciously. Now, if only those gangly legs of yours were as good as your senses, she sniffed, shuffling over my slumped body. Up with you, whippersnapper, she ordered. His gnarliness is not like to be kept waiting. There was something off about this old woman. Maybe it was a little cackles, or the illusionary magic, or the long flowing robes, but I was starting to feel like maybe she wasn't an ordinary old Koopa. I quickly gathered myself off the floor for the upteenth time, impressed at her ability to order me around. I'm very aware this is your first time in the castle, the Koopa woman rasped, shuffling from out behind the luxurious red curtain, motioning for me to follow. Your brother, that wicked Mario, He's been here often, much too often. He causes nothing but trouble, that little scoundrel. Always playing goody-goody. I ignored her comment about Mario. She was just a kind old lady. She probably didn't know what she was saying. Plus, I was too taken aback by the sights and sounds of Bowser's castle. It was the most extravagant, most wondrous, most terrifying place I've ever seen. It was huge inside. It was huge outside as well, so it all made sense. But it blew my mind nonetheless. The top of the ceiling seemed so far away, littered with golden chandeliers dangling above like fancy stalactites. I said dangling because chains clanked and jingled, setting a rather brutal air to this classy aura. But wait, those chains, those were chain chomps? I strained my eyes and saw their sharp teeth firmly closed around the tops of the chandeliers, holding them in their mouths with a strength that I couldn't even comprehend. Ah, you are noticing our kinklinks, yes? The old woman said, sounding quite proud of herself. The name's a work in progress, but you see, his empatheticness, in all his caring glory, found a way to keep many chain chomps off the street, and a place to truly live happily. She nodded, walking through a sea of monsters with ease, the crowds parting wherever she stepped. Chain chomps are naturally very bitey creatures, so giving them something they can bite and hold on to really keeps them entertained. King Bowser himself trains these chomps so that they keep a strong hold over anything they bite. They only let go if he commands it. She grumbled something under her breath. Well, if a pesky public jumps and throws hammers at them. I didn't understand that part. We make sure they're well fed and watered every night, too, she added quickly. Wowie, that was a very interesting description. I had no idea Bowser was so caring. I also had to wonder how this old woman knew so much about Bowser's castle, a mystery that probably even Mario could never solve. As we walked, I noticed the music was even louder than outside. An even larger band played a heated jazzy tune, dressed in fancy tuxedos, blowing their trumpets in a military-like unison. Yet, through it all, I could hear the old woman's voice, like she was talking directly into my head. Unnerving, but I assumed she was just a good speaker. Ah, and you'll find that the lava is all quite, uh, up to safety standard, she nodded. 
It was a line that she must have said much too often. I uh, blinked and noticed the red-hot magma flowing down from the ceiling and all along the walls into fancy Bowser-faced pools. It left an eerie yet cool red glow around the club. Go on, give it a taste. <laughs> Without thinking too hard about it, I really should have, I stuck my finger into one of the pools of lava. It was hot, but nothing so much that it hurt. It had a familiar smell. I licked it off my finger, again, I really should have thought this through, and it floated into pasta heaven. Cheesy marinara. Delicious. It wasn't too long before we made it to the casino part of the club. Hundreds of slot machines whirred, playing happily jingles as coins plinked pleasantly, falling in and out of pockets in a soothing rain-like rhythm. Toads, beans, piantas, moles, koopas, it didn't matter. They all came together to pull the big spiky lever and stare blankly at the colorful slot machines. But we didn't go through that section. We instead walked by the less populated roulette wheels and blackjack tables. Here only the ritziest people could play. I let out a gasp as I saw the Koopa Bros playing a game with a tall, slender woman, a strange green bird laying atop her head like a hat. Don't make eye contact with her. Whatever you do, the old lady said in hushed tones. Oh, is this Cacoletta? That'd be, ni that'd be neat. Then again, there's nothing indicating she's green. The green, the bird is green though. Hmm. Huh? Why? I stared at her pale skin and at the empty glass waving in her fingers. She looked angry. The Cooper Bros were trying to calm her down, urging her to play another game. Her eyes met mine and then fell onto the old woman's. You there! Hello! I am your best customer and I demand service. These dirty, rotten, cheating Cooper Bros are stealing my money and won't give me any more drink! She listlessly handed the old woman her glass, turning back to the card game with the Coopers she so apparently hated. Yes, Valentina, anything you say, Valentina, the old Koopa groaned, casually handing the empty glass to her. Get the woman this syrup martini, will you? Huh? Me? Okay, so it wasn't Kekleta. It wasn't long before a paratrooper swooped down, filling the glass in an instant with a sparkling blue substance. It smelled strong and sweet, but mostly strong. I handed the glass to the one known as Valentina, who didn't so much as look in my direction, already arguing with the Koopa Bros. What if she's another game character? Hmm. Hey, I'm pretty good at this casino thing. I wonder if Bowser is hiring. I could see myself wearing one of those fancy tuxedos, dealing out cards and drinks. <laughs> the Koopa bro in red let out a sigh, and the others shook their heads. They did not look like they wanted to be there, nor did they want this Valentina woman to have more drink. There were plenty of other colorful patrons around, all seemingly very high class and very important but the old woman did not want to speak with them. She only sped up her shuffling, grumbling about how dealing with the customers is beneath me. It was all so very exciting. I couldn't help but lose myself to the colors and the music. Somehow it wasn't scared, at least for a little while. Soon the throne came into view, spiky and huge, coated in black and surrounded by a happy chain chomp entourage. In its huge cushioned seat sat the Koopa King himself, Bowser. His white tuxedo and 10,000 gallon hat were as sharp as his fang-filled grin. So I say to the guy, I say, that's not a chain shop, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> he guffawed, flames licking the air around his enormous maw. You don't have a wife, and you've never been married, your singleness, the old woman said matter-of-factly to Bowser, silencing any comedic possibilities within a five-yard radius. <laughs> oh, Kemi, come on! The king of crime whined, his air of terror, mystery, and class already dashed in an instant. Not in front of the guys! A ghostly snicker echoed through my being. The king of booze floated luxuriously among the tables. A ghost glass of wine. What? Oh. A ghost glass of ghost wine blinking through the space and reality in his little tendril hands. Dark eyes flashed like thunder as he saw me. They are... He is technically Luigi's enemy in the games. <laughs> ah, King Boo was still holding that grudge against me, I see. Wow, what? I worked in one of his haunted mansions as a janitor a few years back, and, well, I didn't know that it was purposefully haunted. I might have accidentally sucked up a few of his ghostly employees and expensive customers. I said I was sorry. That was my last real job, too. Neat. <laughs> Sweet reference. Another regal-looking fellow laughed, but I was not too familiar with this slimy monster. I felt like I had met him before, but maybe that was just a weird dream. 
The enormous frog, Wart, picked at the vegetables in his meaty dish, glaring at them uh, like they killed his family. He banged his plump fists against the table, screaming at uh, the cowering Goomba waiters that he was allergic to vegetables, and that he specifically ordered his plate without any. <laughs> Mario 2 with the turnips. Wow, that's... <laughs> Yeesh, really cramming in the really cramming in a lot here. I used my detective reasoning to deduce that he was probably just a picky eater and kind of a jerk. Mr. What? Mr. Boo? The old Koopa known as Cammy started. His gruesomeness is terribly busy and asks that you two go for a round of roulette for now. For your trouble, we'll be offering you two hundred coins in chips and complimentary drinks and meals, without vegetables, of course. The two grumbled some complaints, but appeared to know better than to argue. They floated and slunk away to another section of the castle. King Boo side-eyed me the whole time, mumbling about how that green little man is ruining me yet again. But I tried not to eavesdrop. I could have said that myself, you know, Bowser growled, curling his sharp claws into a scaly fist. She nodded calmly. I am aware, but you would have lingered. It'd be impolite to make our guest wait. Hey, wait a minute. Her name was Cammy. She wasn't THE Cammy Cooper, was she? The so-called brains behind Bowser? Oh. Oh, that makes sense, didn't it? I uh, guess that would explain the magic and the cackling and how she knew everything about Bowser's castle. Hmm. Who the hell is this little runt? Bowser demanded, sharp eyes stabbing into me with a fierceness that I absolutely could not handle. And why should I care? Something about him pisses me off. Cammy sneered, cackling through the gaps in her teeth. This is Luigi, your grumpiness! Still, there was no reaction. She sighed. The brother in Mario Brothers? His eyes widened like the floor underneath him had collapsed and were about to dunk him into a pit of lava. Bowser's teeth splayed wide in a troubling grin, and he relaxed back into his throne, tapping his claws against the middle. <laughs> so you're the Luigi Mario's always going on about? I tried to explain to him that I was. Tried to say anything at all, but I just stood there. Still as a spiny, caught in the Lakitu's headlights. Well, at least Mario talked about me. That made me feel a little better. Gotta say, I expected his brother to be pretty pathetic. But you take the cake! Bowser went on, enjoying this way too much. The chain chomps around him jingled with glee as their master left. He always spoke so highly of you, but I knew. I knew. <laughs> That'd probably hurt a lot more if it wasn't true. Wow, ouch, dude. Dude, get some self-esteem. <laughs> he wiped a tear from his eye delicately, tossing the drop of water into a streaming pile of lava. Ah, but where are my manners? What brings you to my fine establishment? Come for my famous royal syrup? He asked, a sly grin on his face. He probably hoped I was an addict like everyone else here. Hoped I would humiliate Mario even more than I already had. Maybe just wanted a place to spend all those coins your brother's been making, huh? <laughs> He laughed again, knowing Mario was not the best paid detective by any means. Cammy flew up on her broom to her position by Bowser's side, glasses gleaming with an insidious glow. She whispered something in Bowser's ear, seizing his laughter but not ruining his good mood. Not much of a talker, eh? Just like your lousy brother, ain't ya? He leaned forward and I could see my own horrified reflection against his teeth. I hated it. Hated my reflection more than anything. Hated how scared I clearly was. Speaking of which... Or has Mario been, hmm? Seems he's not bothered us in quite a while. Kami kept whispering things into his ear. Things I so desperately wanted to hear. Things I needed to hear. Bowser knew something. Or at least, Kami did. Chain Chomp got your tongue? He hissed, gleefully, reaching down to pet one of his precious Chain Chomps, who nuzzled into his scaly touch. Not that any of these darlings would bite your tongue. Unless I told them to, of course. <laughs> He returned his gaze back to mine. But let me guess. You've not seen your brother in a while either, have you? Wondering if I got something to do with it? Wondering if I do know something, don't you? I had to be strong. I had to do this for Mario. I could at least talk to him. It was just like Gumbella said. He wouldn't hurt me. But what he says will hurt me, won't it? What if it's something I don't want to hear? No, no, that's not important right now. I nodded. It seemed like this tiny reaction angered him. Like he expected me to fall before him and start bawling. To be fair, I was pretty close to curling up on the floor and crying. And what, you expect me to just give you this information for free? 
He slammed his fist onto the throne, the chain chomps around him, growling and glaring my way. You honestly think I'd do a single thing for Mario? His voice boomed through the club, the air around my body growing hot. The band halted their playing, and not a single soul dared speak. Sire, Cammy said tonelessly. The room instantly cooled down. Bowser's expression softened as well, but not all that much. He snapped his fingers casually, and the band returned to its usual classy beats. Well, you'd be almost right, he said with a flaming cough. But this ain't a charity, unless you're a chain shop. How about we play a little game, hmm? How many coins you got on you? I wordlessly rummaged through my pockets and held out a measly handful of gold. His eyes gleamed with shock. Jeez, is that really all you have? I almost feel bad, Bowser said strangely. Almost. But my information is incredibly valuable. I'm afraid I can't just part ways with it for that. He grinned again, leaning his huge jaw atop a muscled fist. You're Mario's brother, ain't you? That means you own Mario's detective agency, at least partially. Why don't you just bet your dinky little agency? Eh? I saw my own face pale, even in his pearly whites. Now, now, come on, don't be a baby, Bowser continued, clearly not knowing me. Let me put it this way, we play a little game of my choosing. If you win, I'll tell you anything you want to know, and... His fangs spread wider as he leaned closer. If you lose, I'll still tell you anything you want to know. His moist, hot breath slapped against my face, and contrary to popular belief, I did not like it. Of course, if you lose, you give me Mario's detective agency. Fair's fair, right? Not like Mario has been using it anyway. Cammy made a face. Your manipulativeness, I'm not sure property ownership works that way. Shush! Bowser quickly faced her, his cool aura shouting it again. He doesn't know that either! Don't shush me, Cammy said sternly. I won't make your eggs the way you like them. Sorry, he grumbled, turning back to me. But Luigi here, you're an honorable guy like me, aren't you? I know you'd give it to me if I won fair and square. No, never. I'd never just give you my home. And Mario's? Think of all the information that must be stored. Bowser could use that to wreck even more havoc than he already does. And it's Mario's. I can't lose him any more than I already have. Okie dokie, my mouth said, unable to disagree with peer pressure. Honestly, what other choice did I have at this point? I got this far. I couldn't leave empty-handed. Also, I really, really do not know how to say no. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to like you. Your brother would have made this needlessly complicated. Maya wouldn't have let anyone walk all over him like I did, that's for sure. Now then. He lounged back against his throne, kicking his feet up. With another snap of his fingers, paratroopers appeared, quickly pulling a curtain behind him and revealing an enormous screen. I had to wonder how anyone differentiated his finger snapping to know what snap meant what. Let's spin the wheel to see what game you get. Not actually a wheel, your awfulness. Cammy whispered too loud. Okay, Cammy, come on. Bowser whined, trying to keep his massive voice low but failing. I'm trying to be more appreciative with you, all right? But this is going a little too far. Cammy put a wrinkled hand to her chin, thinking it over. I suppose you're right. I do appreciate it. I just wanted you to know uh, so you don't embarrass yourself in front of everyone. You're embarrassing me right now, he groaned, pressing his claws against his head. Ugh, forget it. Just spin the roulette, will ya? The lights dimmed dramatically, leaving only the large screen lit up with five different options. It read, Bowser's Balloon Burst, Bowser's Tug of War, Bowser Revolution, Bowser's Mumba Balls, and last, in bright catchy gold, 10,000 coins. With a grumpy snap of his fingers, the roulette went off highlighting each and every one of the options at an anxiety-inducing speed. I think we should change the name of that second-to-last one, your ruthlessness, Cammy whispered. Bowser nodded, a concerned frown on his face. Yeah, that, uh, that doesn't look so great. I mean, at the time, it sounded amazing with the alliteration and all. As the roulette finally began to slow, I heard a deep and unsettling beating. I looked to see uh, the band had stopped. It was my own heart. Oh, I could hardly handle this. What had I got myself into? It was nearing its end, slowing down painfully over each and every option until it at last stilled onto... 10,000 coins! My trembling stopped. My face must have lit up and I think I finally experienced true joy. Things were finally looking up for Luigi! And then the roulette went back up one option. Bowser's bumper balls. My heart sank. I must have visibly lost all hope because Bowser only grinned wider at the turn of events. Oh, so close, 
he laughed, not even breaking a sweat. It was as if he had planned that to happen from the beginning. He wouldn't do something so cruel, would he? Looks like you'll be playing a fun little game we like to call... <coughs> Bowser's Bumper Spheres. Huh? Wasn't it called Bowser's Bumper? Nope, nope, it's always been spheres since the beginning. He snapped his fingers frantically, trying to close the curtains over the screen, lighting his club once again with life and music. Now, get ready, scrawny. We're starting this show right now. <laughs> it all happened so fast. Next thing I knew, the ground underneath my feet was shaking, yawning its mouth open as it awoke. I found myself standing on a platform raised above the ground, surrounded by a moat of dangerously cheesy lava. Bowser looked up at me with that devious grin of his, enjoying the spectacle all too much. I realized everyone in the entire club room must have been looking at me. My terrified face was plastered over every TV screen in view. Oh, I hope this isn't being broadcasted. Drop the balls! Bowser... <laughs> Okay, I'm... <laughs> Bowser ordered, then muttered, I, I, I'm at the spheres! Drop the spheres! Next, four balls landed on the opposite corners of the circular arena. The balls themselves were each colored separately and about as big and tall as me. I uh, poked at it, rubbery and smooth. What was I meant to do with this? <laughs> Bowser cackled gleefully. Cammy let out a cheerful, hee <laughs> as well. Here's the rule, scrawny! A flying screen broadcasted down the middle of the arena, showing off Bowser's charismatic fangs. You're going against three of my best employees in this game, got that? Rules are simple, even a little weirder like you should get them. What you do is you get my bu- <laughs> <laughs> What you do is you get a- <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you get on my butt! <coughs> he sputtered, getting spit on the screen before quickly wiping it off from a hanky that Cammy handed him. <coughs> he continued. Get on my spheres here. You'll have to balance yourself on them. And the objective is to be the last one standing ramming your sphere into your opponents, knocking him off the arena. If you fall down your sphere or fall out of the arena, you lose. Got that? Knock your opponents out of the ring. Easy. Hey, bounce on this ball? I, I could barely even bounce myself just walking down the street. How in the world was I meant to do this? I gulped. Hurry up and get ready! People are getting antsy! Bowser screamed, his smoky breath charring the screen. Luckily, he still had his trusty purple hanky. With only a bit of a shriek, I scrambled up the colorful ball and held out my hands wildly as I felt the thing already begin to move underneath my feet. Oh, this was not good. This was not good at all. I flapped my arms and moved my legs wildly, but I still had trouble keeping the ball still. Bowser's fangs shone again, grinning at the sight of me. Now then, let me introduce you to your opponents, Bowser's monitor said. In the left corner, we have Koopa Red, leader of my fabulous Koopa Bros. In a puff of smoke, a red Koopa wearing a red bandana over his head appeared. His feet easily maneuvered the ball with a ninja's dexterity. He struck a pose and his teeth glimmered under the light of the chandeliers. I'll make you disappear, Red said, trying hard to sound cool. If the boss says it's okay. Boss only wants you to knock him into the lava, Red! Blue shouted helpfully from down below. Oh, right. Bowser ignored that. In the right corner, we have one of our more glamorous employees. She's a veteran at our club, you know her, you love her, and she's proof that I hire plenty of women! Cammy let out a defeated sigh, shrugging as if to say, that wasn't the right way to say that, but good enough, I guess. Wendy Koopa of the Koopa Kids! Bowser finished, and underneath a shining spotlight, the pink Koopa lady herself appeared. She balanced herself on the ball with ease, standing atop it with just the tip of her toes. Her huge hoop earrings gleamed under the light, and her massive lips blew kisses out into an adoring crowd of fans. I've been riding balls for years! I won't be beaten! Wendy cried out. Wendy, we're calling them spheres now, Red pleaded with her, sweat soaking through his bandana. I really don't understand why they were so adamant on changing the name. And in the last corner, he's another veteran who's been making a comeback recently. This guy's all brawn and not really any brain, but that's okay. We love him anyway. Get up here, boom boom! Not at all insulted by Bowser's description, the huge Koopa leaped up onto the stage without so much as a grunt. The ball heaved under his weight, looking like it was about to pop. 
but Boom Boom stood tall regardless. His big noodle arms waved around frantically as his eyes glared at every corner of the platform, ready to plow down anyone that got in his way. Zoom zoom! He grumbled incoherently. Uh huh, you tell him, Boom Boom! Bowser replied, pretending he understood that. He tipped his white hat in front of the camera and winked for the audience, absolutely loving the attention. And, just to make this fair for you, Scrawny, I thought I'd add a little incentive for my minions to beat each other. Whichever one of you wins will be getting a massive raise! Red's eyes lit up like power stars, and Wendy gasped greedily at the thought, a mischievous grin falling across her lips. Boom Boom didn't seem to notice, but he was just happy to be there. Ha <laughs> ha! Red laughed, clenching his fists as he nimbly balanced himself atop his ball. He glared at Wendy. Now I'll finally prove to the boss that time doesn't increase the worth of a minion. Me and the bros are gonna love this little reward. Wendy scowled. No one even knows your little band of misfits. I'll win this without even breaking a sweat. She said confidently. There's a reason people think of us when they think of Bowser's minions. Boom, zoom. Boom, boom shouted angrily, flailing his arms still. You're doing great, sweetie. Cammy said genuinely. Finally, the screen turned back to me and I couldn't help but wish it didn't. I didn't like the attention. Bowser's eyes seized with a fiery energy as he said, Well then, Scrawny, I hope you're ready because we're about to begin! I'm not! I'm not ready at all! I could barely even keep my ball in place! Too bad! Bowser guffawed. Now here we go! Three! Two! One! Red tensed, his mask getting sweaty under all the pressure. Wendy merely jingled her hoop earrings, giving another flourish to the crowd. Boom Boom just kept flailing, and me? I could feel my legs turning into jelly again, fumbling backwards and forwards, teetering on the edge of the arena and my ball at all times. Start! Bowser roared, flames eating the screen away. It all happened so fast, too fast. I was never prepared to fight any of these Koopas, much less fight them while balancing on a ball. Of course I never stood a chance. What other outcome could there possibly be? Oh, well, I uh, guess I should explain what happened. Sorry for the spoilers. Red was the first to dart out of his corner, rushing forward at inhuman and in Koopa speeds towards Wendy. Wendy, being the veteran that she is, dodged deftly to the side, laughing a spiteful laugh. Red's eyes widened as his ball dangled dangerously on the edge, just barely able to come to a stop in time. Oh, Red, you're always so predictable. Wendy taunted, finding the time to put on lipstick. Red fumed, his entire body boiling almost as hot as the lava. Stop making fun of me! I'm cool! All the boys say I am! Yeah, bro! You're super cool! Yellow screamed from below. See? Red said, motioning towards the crew. Unbeknownst to them, Boom Boom was flailing his arms and legs, appearing to build speed with his ball. Oh, please! Wendy sighed. Lord Bowser only keeps you around because he feels sorry for you. When I toss you off, I'll prove how much of a weird nerd you are to everyone. And then Boom Boom and I will take down this little green geek, and we will have an honorable duel to decide the true winner. And I, of course, will still win because I know what I'm doing. No offense, Boom Boom. <laughs> Boom Boom said quietly, sounding like an engine revving up. Nerd really hit home for Red. He almost fell off right there on the spot, but then he just gritted his teeth and screamed, I am not a nerd! And charged forward again with the speed of 100 ninjas. That's just the speed of one ninja, but you get what I mean, right? Wendy finished putting on her lipstick and had time to laugh again before dodging to the side once more. Her eyes widened as she realized Red must have predicted this, his ball swerving and drifting, even leaving skid marks on the platform, as he curved his way back towards her directly. With a decisive bump, he slammed his ball into hers, knocking the glitzy girl backwards and nearly right out of her heels. For once, she didn't seem so glamorous as her hoops jingled like crazy and her mouth opened wide as she shrieked, flailing her arms around like Matt in attempt to regain control. Ha! How do you like that? Red said, striking his trademarked pointing pose at her instead of just finishing the fight. Could a nerd do that? But it was now Wendy's turn to be furious. Steam was practically coming out of her ears. Must have been a Koopa thing. They were related to dragons or something, weren't they? I... I was going easy on you! She screeched, rushing towards Red yet again, a dangerous determination in her eyes. I'll put you back to irrelevancy where you belong! Bring it on, old hag! Red screamed back, dashing towards her. Hey! Cammy yelled. Sorry, not you! Their balls clashed together, both steaming and furious, neither giving each other much of an inch. Red and Wendy grappled each other, clasping their hands together, screaming insults and spittle all over each other as their feet meshed into a light-speed blur. 
It was a power struggle for the ages. I was enthralled. The two were incredibly evenly matched despite what the other would say. Sparks and smoke rose from the balls as they pushed into each other. Boom boom! Boom boom roared intelligently, <laughs> his flailing spinning finally at max power. Like a top that had been gathering speed for 12 hours, he let himself loose into the arena, stronger and faster than even a bonsai bill. And like a bonsai bill, there was no controlling him after he shot out. He swung around the arena like an absolute madman, whirling around without a care in the world. I'm sure you can guess what happened next. His target reticle locked onto me, and as this media of meat nearly crashed into me, his raw power turned him around and instead slammed directly into Wendy and Red in the center of the arena. Huh? What? Boom boom no- Was the only thing either of the Koopas could say as they exploded from his impact, flying off the opposite ends of each other and down into the cheesy lava below. Sadly, Boom Boom had less control over himself than he must have lacked. After the impact, he found himself going... Oh my god, is this going to be the meme? This isn't going to be the meme, right? It's, it's, going to be, it's going to be the meme. It's going to be the meme. After the impact, he found himself going too fast to stop and flung his beefy body over the edge into the lava below. Leaving me in the same corner I started, still just barely even able to balance myself. Luigi won by doing nothing. Uh, good job, Skywrites. Just, just bravo, I have to say. What? Bowser howled, his voice shaking the entire club and even the chandeliers. In a fit of rage, the king himself leapt onto the platform, fire burning and melting anything and everything near his mouth. Just his impact caused an earthquake in the near vicinity, completely knocking me down from the ball and back onto my nose rather painfully. He did absolutely nothing, you dirty rotten cheater! Bowser roared, stomping towards my crumpled, shivering body. I could feel the flames ready to burn me alive. I could hear his claws sharpening as he planned to skewer me. You're even worse than your brother! You think you can come into my territory, my home, and make a mockery of me?! I accepted my death. I lived a fine life. Well, not really. My life was pretty pathetic. I never did anything worth noting, but at least I died trying to do something. That's somewhat admirable, right? Before King Bowser could brutally murder me in front of at least uh, 100 witnesses, I heard a little magical puttering come to his side. Your furiousness! I must remind you that we are in public! Cammy whispered something else that only he and I could hear. Plus, remember your blood pressure. You have Bowser Jr. to think of. Try counting backwards. I know exactly where I am. It's about time I sent the message to everyone. I don't care what that stupid doctor said. Okay, okay, yes. Cammy said anxiously, we could send a message, but maybe we should send a message when our heads are a little clearer, yes? You know, like write an angry letter but never send it. What would your boy think of you if he saw you go to prison? Shut up about my boy! He groaned. I, I, I know I have a son to think about. And just like when you were a little troublemaker, you were very impressionable, Cammy said in a strangely motherly tone. There were definitely some pieces to the puzzle that was missing here. I know you grew up without any parents to look up to of your own, but that's not a reason that you should do that to Bowser Jr. too, right? The flames at my back were lessening, and the air felt like a lava flow cooling itself into the salty ocean. <sighs> I guess you're right, Cammy. Always have been, haven't you? That's right. <laughs> she cackled. Now, I know this little whippersnapper didn't deserve to win, but he did win. It's not like we lose anything. Why don't we just talk to this sad little man? What could he possibly do anyway? Even with my eyes closed, I could tell Bowser was frowning, but at least he was no longer going to kill me. I, f <clears throat> I felt a... Oh my god, my voice is, <laughs> my voice is wrecked. <clears throat> I, felt <clears throat> I felt a gigantic claw pick me up by my overalls and force me on my feet, making me stare directly into his beastly maw. Sorry for scaring you, scrawny, Bowser said genuinely. Stop crying, jeez! I couldn't help it. I'm honestly surprised I only started crying once. You know, you remind me of myself when I was younger. Wowie, really? No, not at all, actually. Bowser put a finger on his chin. Why does a baby version of you seem so familiar? 
Kame quickly flew in on her broom between us, clearly distraught. Uh, um, let's not dwell on that. There were certainly no kidnappings decades ago, and even if there were, there's no proof. No one understands Yoshi's. Now, uh, let's fix up this platform and get more comfortable, shall we? She gestured to the paratroopers and other Koopas to get things back in order, sweat forming at her wrinkled brow. Hmm, Raza had gotten me thinking too. I remembered having nightmares about a magic Koopa, but those were just nightmares, weren't they? And the magic Koopa wasn't an old lady, that's for sure. Before I could think on it any further, the platform receded back down, allowing the floors to connect back together like a horrible battle to the death didn't just happen. I saw an upset Red fuming to himself as the other Koopa bros attempted to get some of the lava out of his shell. Wendy too was grouching and grumbling to herself, trying to get the spare cheese out of her hoops and hair. Ludwig and a couple of the other Koopa kids uh, looking disappointed. Oh man, I can imagine like Ludwig. Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. He's the leader, right? Like, it's just imagine him looking at. I don't know, man. Imagine that Ludwig just looking over at Wendy, just as she's trying to pull the cheese out of her hair, uh, like super disappointed. <laughs> Boom Boom was happy though. The marinara sauce went great with his noodle arms. He was starving. What? <clears throat> Bowser returned to his throne, petting a few chain chomps delicately on his back. It was almost cute how tenderly he stroked the metal monsters, the way they pressed against his scaly hands. Both were so tough and fearsome, yet neither could hurt each other. Maybe that's why he liked them so much? They understood each other. The world feared them, but at least they wouldn't fear each other. <clears throat> So, scrawny, Bowser said with a sigh, sounding exhausted after his burst of rage. What do you want to know? Let me guess. Want to know where your brother's been, eh? I nodded excitedly. Bowser appeared to be in a much more understanding mood. But there was something else I wanted to know, too. I can't forget about my original mission, to help Daisy find her crown. That bean thief, Popple, and Waluigi had stolen it, but apparently they lost it in a game here at Bowser's castle. What? Bowser grumbled, a hint of anger returning. Those two said I stole it? And you believed a couple of actual criminals over me because I'm Bowser, right? Um, uh, well, I hadn't thought of it like that. T typical. So I kidnapped the chief of police a few times. Maybe it was a little overly forceful in my romantic gestures. Suddenly that means anything that goes wrong in the city is my fault, huh? Cammy decided it was important to step in. With an unsightly cough, she said, I was here during the young harlot's visit. Daisy, was it? The international sports superstar, or whatever you kids are calling her? She didn't seem so great to me, what with all the drinking she did. Bah, disgusting. She's supposed to be a role model to children and women everywhere. She ignored the fact that she and Bowser weren't exactly the best role models either. Hmm, this lined up very well with Daisy's own story. Shouldn't she have told you all this before? Kemi asked with a bulging-eyed glare. If you knew she was here, why would you think that little fool Popple stole it from her, and then brought it here? Oh, well, I, I didn't have much time to really think on all the logistics yet. We won the crown fair and square right off that little girl's head, Kame rasped. She was the one who spent all her money on syrup. She was the one who lost all her coins on slots. She begged the Cooper Bros to play more games with her, to keep partying with her. We told her it would cost her. We told her, and she offered her crown. She said she didn't care about the old thing. It was just an ancient relic. Kame seemed particularly offended by the last part. Yeah, Belza added, scratching a chain shop under its chin. It closed its eyes in heaven. I came in the next day and Cammy told me all about it. I said it'd be a great centerpiece to attract new customers. The sports superstar's crown, right front and center. We had posters made for it and everything. Cammy grumbled something angrily, flustered for once. It was my fault, your geniusness. I saw that stupid little bean thief enter the castle. I had information on him. I knew who he was, but I was so sure. I was sure he wouldn't take anything from us. With all my magic and our centuries, I was overconfident. But that no good hoodlum made off with the crown. Bowser banged his fist on the throne, but the chain chomps only. Bowser banged his fist. Bowser banged his fist on the throne, but the chain chomps only thought he was playing a game. And then the guy had the nerve to blame it on us. Real piece of work. Why the hell are you asking about it anyway? Should you have gotten it back when you captured him? Ah, well, that was the thing. He sort of got away. It didn't seem like he had the crown on him either. What? Bowser shook his head. This doesn't make sense! So what, the guy tells you he stole the crown, but doesn't have the crown on him, and then tells you who stole the crown from him? Um, well, I guess that's about right. It is a strange story, isn't it? Sounds to me like someone's trying to play you for a fool, scrawny. Bowser said, leaning his face onto his fist lazily. And let me tell you, it ain't me. <laughs> he grinned. At least for now. If he's stealing rare medals, he might be selling them to Smithy, Cammy said out loud, looking thoughtful. Makes sense. Bowser agreed, nodding. I don't like the guy one bit. 
He's a freak. Never comes out of his factory, never makes a big entrance, but always wants to do business, always wants to make more things. As long as we stay out of each other's way, there's usually no problem. There was a time we got into a bit of a scuffle, but we were pretty evenly matched. He screwed up, but he's a man of his word. There's also the fact that Pup was the Beanish person, Cammy went on. She knew everything that went on in the city, didn't she? Kekleta has been pretty aggressive in trying to get new territory. She could have some traction with other Beanish people considering she's a Bean herself, although that seems unlikely. Ugh, that backstabbing Bean bitch. Bowser cried, his temper flaring up just like his flames. Kami gave him the side eye through her glasses, looking very disappointed. Uh, sorry. <coughs> Bowser coughed. Well, some of my best friends. <laughs> 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 Some of my best friends are bitches. He petted another chain shop sweetly. You guys, you, you guys know I don't have a problem with women. Look, Cammy's proof of that. I know that, your sexistness, Cammy said grumpily. But we need to work that word out of your vocabulary if you ever really want to win the people over. You're still thinking about your alleged kidnaps against Chief Peach. Plus, if Junior ever heard you speaking like that... Gah, I know, I know, Bowser hissed. Fine, sorry, I meant jerk. I, 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 I meant to say jerk. She's a real jerk, all right? I hate her. At least Smithy knows his limits. At least Smithy will agree to deals and promises. That Kekaleta. Bowser grit his fangs together. She'd sell her helpless grandma's dinner to piranha plants if it gave her a little power. She's as cunning as she is ugly. Always plotting something. Don't believe a single thing she ever says. Cammy glared again. What? She is ugly. It's not because she's a woman. Smithy's also an ugly mother... Um... It's not about that. Why did you feel the need to insult her looks and not Smithy's then? Look, I just, I really don't like her, okay? She's a scumbag of the highest caliber. She took Junior and... He blinked, suddenly remembering I was standing right there. It seemed they forgot I was here. That's okay. It happens a lot. I'm not very important. Forget that last part. He growled at me. Say a word of it to anyone and you're dead. Got it. I could barely breathe. I turned to Cammy to see if Bowser went over the line. No, she was glaring at me strongly. Those two meant it, didn't they? I wouldn't say a word. Why would I even want to? Good. Bowser nodded. Point is, I wouldn't put it past her. I have no idea where this crown is anymore. Maybe Smithy has it. Maybe Kekleta ordered to steal it. I don't know. There's your answer. What else do you want, scrawny? Bowser's relaxed air became charged yet again. I didn't want to push my luck. I only wanted to ask about Mario and where he could possibly be. That was more important than anything. About time we got to that red little devil, Bowser snapped. You know, though, I'm surprised your pal Princess didn't tell you anything. She didn't know anything, so of course she wouldn't tell me anything. Bowser sneered at that, looking so smug. Oh, is that what she told you? Ah, that peach. He looked almost distant. She's not as good of a person as she thinks she is. Huh? Why would he say that? What did he mean? To think she'd withhold information about your own brother. <laughs> he laughed, enjoying this way too much. Now, why would she do that? The way he phrased the question made it seem as though the answer was obvious to everyone but me. Sire, Cammy said, gently reminding him to stop teasing me so much. Right, right. Let me tell you what I know about your stupid brother. Bowser pouted. Which is way too much, by the way. I swear, the guy is here once a week, checking up on me. I don't cause nearly as much trouble as that smith or that Kekleta. Why me, huh? Everything I do here is perfectly legal. He said in the way that meant more like, It should be illegal, shouldn't it? Gahaha. <laughs> Anyway, you can imagine my surprise when that nasty little red jerk doesn't show up to my doorstep for a week. Bowser smirked. It's been a great week, by the way. But I got to thinking. What is that little goody-goody up to? Maybe he's up to something. So, as I do, I ask Cammy what he's been doing. What was the last thing he did? What's he been up to? Cammy's glasses gleamed dangerously, like an all-seeing crystal ball. I know everything that happens in this city. I have eyes and ears everywhere. No one escapes me. I shivered at the thought. But Mario... The last thing I know is that he was called in by Chief Toadstool to investigate a murder. M murder Oh, darling. Cammy sighed. Murder is quite common on these streets. You'd be wise to get used to it. It's nothing so special. From what my sources say, there was a turf war between Kekleta and Smithy. Some toad got caught in the crossfire and was found dead. Bowser puffed some. Black angry smoke through his nostrils. Bah! If it was a Cooper or a Koopa, no one would care. They act so high and mighty. But only if it's a toad that gets hurt. They don't care about any of us. Cammy nodded. That toad was apparently someone important to the NDPD. She shrugged. 
I couldn't care to find out who or why, but last anyone seen of Mario was him going to check out Smithy. He was also planning on stopping by Kakleta's Turf as well, but there's been no sign of him at either place since. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. It kept repeating in my head. I hated it here. I didn't want to hear this. Why couldn't they just tell me Mario was fine? Why couldn't they just tell me where he was? Why did they have to act like none of this mattered? Mario was right. They have no hearts. They really are evil, aren't they? And before you get any bright ideas, Bowser growled, trying to read whatever my facial expression must have been. We had nothing to do with this, got it? Sure, I'd love to get rid of Mario, if I could. He messes with me more than anyone else. But here's the thing, if I got rid of him, I know for sure I'd be the first to be suspected. You people always blame me for everything. It'd be too much of a hassle for me to get rid of him. That wasn't exactly rock-solid evidence that he didn't do it. It could be me because I'm the obvious choice. Sometimes a pipe has bite marks on it, sometimes it's rats, sometimes it just happens to rust that way. But most of the time, it's a hungry piranha plant. Just because it isn't always a piranha plant doesn't mean I shouldn't suspect it. Bowser was getting testy. I wasn't groveling at his feet anymore. I just didn't have the energy for it. It felt like someone had ripped my soul out with a scythe and left me for dead in some dusty old castle. So, what are you gonna do now, scrawny? Bowser asked, tapping his claws against his throne making a metallic clicking noise. It reminded me of a clock, like a timer, counting down. I'm sick of your face around here. What can I do to get you out of here? I wasn't sure. My mind was stuck in a loop. I kept seeing my brother, kept seeing him, but having a hard time picturing him. I could only hope I'd see him again, to get a refresher. I would see him again, wouldn't I? Bowser sighed. All right, scrawny. I get it. Again, there was that face. That face like he wasn't an evil tyrant, like he wasn't some criminal mastermind tossing drugs in the streets like it was candy. I hated it almost as much as I hated him. I don't like Mario, but I guess he is your brother. It sucks that he's been missing. For you, I guess. How about I give you a ride over to Little Beantown, free of charge? Can't go bother Kekulana instead of me. I'd send you over to Smithy's, but we got an agreement, you see. I don't step on his toes, he don't step on mine. Kekulana, on the other hand, I refuse to bargain with her. Why not? Might as well. It didn't matter. Jeez, man, your face is depressing. Let's get you out of here before you start making the other guys cry just looking at you. He snapped his fingers again and I uh, felt the ground open up beneath me, swallowing me whole into the dark. You'll be taking the express car out of here, Scrotty! <laughs> I felt something scrum underneath me and a pair of hands grabbed me roughly. It should have been terrifying, but I just couldn't shriek. I heard some gears whirring, some kind of strange electronic noise calculating something. I think it was a cannon? Now that that's out of the way, I heard Cammy say outside my pit of darkness. We really need to talk about your minions, Bowser. Ugh, it's never good when you call me that. It's come to my attention that this may be a hostile work environment. I think there needs to be some changes so what happened during the sphere battle doesn't happen again. Ugh, man, I guess you're right. I had no idea Red and Winnie hated each other so much. Maybe it was a little too rough on him. There was a pause. Is that green doofus still here? Why isn't the cannon fired? They're waiting for your order, your leaderness. Right, right. Uh, hurry up and fire already. I gotta go check on Junior to make sure he's actually sleeping. Cammy, can you... And I couldn't hear anything else. The cannon exploded with power, the bullet bill flying out through the now open roof of Bowser's castle, holding me extremely tightly in its grumpy mitts. I was pelted with rain for a short time before we pierced the dark clouds. I couldn't see anything out here. It was just darkness, clouds, and stars. Yeah, okay, okay, we're done. We're done here. Man, I, I don't even have the energy for an end segment here. I, I, I just, this was this was recorded over like several d days. Um, I don't know how long this is going to be. Uh, yeah, several breaks because thank you, Audacity. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to cut this off here. Uh, see ya. Ciao. I can't do this. What was I thinking? There's no way I can do this. Huh? Did you sh did you shay or Huh? Did you shay or something? Gumbella asked, her mouth over the handlebars. Do you have any idea how many coins this costs? No! A buffoon like you would never I wanted to climb into a pipe, fall into an endless pit, and never come back out. Uh put a shigami over this or something. This feels really appropriate. What? Of course I'm talking to you, you idiot, uh, young man. <coughs> <coughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> a coughing fit overcame her, conveniently hiding whatever word she was trying to say before. Okay, could I... Hmm. 
Okay, hold on. I can try this. In. What? No. Then. How about okay? Actually, how about we pause it here for a sec? Jeez, I'm done here. Uh, yeah. Her huge hoop earrings gleamed under the light, and her massive lips blew kisses out into an adoring crowd of fans. I've been. I have been riding ball. <laughs> okay, wait. How do I do this? Never mind. I've been riding. I've been riding balls for years. I won't be beaten. Wendy. Freaking. Ha no, no. <clears throat> how do I phrase this? Um. No. How do I? What, what voice do I give Wendy? I mean. Huh. I've been riding balls for years. I won't be a freaking. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't know what voice to give her even in my uh not trying voice um uh even even with my attitude to not try with girl voices um okay hold on hold on i've been riding <sighs> i've been riding balls for years i won't be beaten wendy cried out wendy we're calling them spheres now Big Noodle Arms waved around frantically as his eyes glared at every corner of the platform, ready to plow down anyone that got in his way. Zoom zoom! Zoom zoom! Zoom zoom! He grumbled. Zoom zoom! He grumbled incoherently. Hey! Hey! Cammy yelled. Hey! Hey! Cammy. Hey! Cammy yelled. Your furiousness! I must remind you that we are in public. Your furiousness. I must remind you that we are in public. Your furiousness. I must remind you that we are in public. Ugh, that backstabbing bean. Can't say that word. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. That beach is too close to, to the word I'm looking for. So, uh, to the word it is, uh, batch. Yes! Yes, that's perfect! Because she can turn into a bat, too. Gotcha. <laughs> Ugh, that backstabbing bean batch. Ugh, that backstabbing bean batch! You know, in public?